I now invite Mr Ken Matthews to deliver the occasional address. Ken Matthews is a local businessman whose career began when he graduated from the then Footscray Institute of Technology in 1979. I nearly said 1799. 1979. And of course you're all aware that FIT is one of uh, our forebears. He returned to obtain a graduate diploma in accounting in 1984, possibly the highest qualification offer offered by Footscray Institute at that time. As a son of the western suburbs, Ken has devoted his life to supporting and nurturing the development of this community. Some 20 years ago, it became apparent to Ken that Melbourne's West needed a CBD quality accounting practice to serve the businesses of the region. With that in mind, he established an accounting practice in the family garage of his home in East Keelor. That practice has evolved into Matthew Steer, the largest chartered accounting practice in the northwest of Melbourne. Currently, Matthew Steer employs over 40 people, 14 of whom are graduates of Victoria University. Ken is a chartered accountant, a fellow of the Australian Institute of Company Directors and a fellow of the Tax Institute of Australia. In addition to serving as partner and CEO of Matthew Steer, Ken has been involved in various community initiatives including the Mooney Valley Indigenous Art Project, organised in conjunction with NADOC, he has also been Chairman of Mercy Hospice and Deputy Chair of Navy Health, a health fund for the families of serving members of the RAN. He is a former Director of RIDO, which is the Western Region Economic Development Organisation, and a former Chairman of the Small Business Committee of the CPAs. Ken was also on the Organising Committee and Board of the East Keelor Bendigo Community Bank, and he is currently Chairman of Melbourne West Export Network. In 2005, not surprisingly, Ken was Mooney Valley's Citizen of the Year. In his spare time, Ken follows the Western Bulldogs and at weekends can be often be found chasing Angus beef cattle around his farm near Timboon in the Western District. He really likes to stay in the West. Please welcome Mr Ken Matthews. Well, let me begin by uh, firstly acknowledging also the traditional owners, the Wurundjeri, and I would also like to pay my respects to elders past and present. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen and graduates. May I begin by saying just how honoured I am here to be here today um, to give this address. Almost 30 years ago, I attended my own graduation at the Dallas Brooks Hall, and it's great to, to have the graduation here in the West. I can't remember much about the day, other than how proud I was to have my parents and my girlfriend, who was later to become my wife, sitting there watching me and supporting me. It was an even bigger occasion for my mum and dad, who were so proud because I was the first in my family, like some of you, I guess, to obtain a tertiary qualification. It was quite surprising that this actually happened. You see, most of my family have a problem associated with dyslexia, and when I was at school, this was a serious impediment to study. There wasn't the support or understanding that there is today. This meant that tertiary education was a challenge and a half. Another thing I'll tell you is I have four children, three of whom have the same problem. One is a vet, one is an accountant, surprise, surprise, and one is studying here at Victoria University in nursing. We are still going through the VCE pains with my youngest daughter, who doesn't have the problem. Like me, my kids have turned the obstacle into a challenge and it's made them stronger and more determined. But back to my education. I returned to Footscray to undertake a graduate diploma in accounting and those studies in advanced taxation of trust, company law and cost accounting set me up when I started my own practice some 12 months after I graduated. I have to admit I hated cost accounting <laughs> as an undergrad and I didn't really enjoy it as a postgrad. But today in my business consulting role, I'm very grateful for every one of those boring minutes, or most of them anyway. So my, mess, my first message to you is focus on your strengths, not your weaknesses. 
certainly work to improve your weaknesses, but it is your strength that will enable you to succeed. Some of you here today may have difficulties which will make the future even harder. Some of you from non-English speaking backgrounds, for instance, may be able to relate to this, especially if you're still having trouble negotiating your way around the minefield of Aussie English. Good employers look beyond that though. One of our staff who has only been in Australia eight years had great difficulty getting a job in accounting because of his heavy European accent. He was actually working as a car car parking attendant at Wilson Car Parking. He came to an interview and said to us, give me a chance and I won't let you down. Well, we gave him a chance. He's absolutely been fantastic. His enthusiasm, his loyalty, not to mention he's a talented accountant. In fact, he's only got one module to go and he'll become a chartered accountant. Um, You'll finish, I think he gets your results next month. He's He's going to be made a manager of our firm in July. He's earned it. So I'm very proud of him, of what he's achieved, proud of Victoria University for giving him a chance and proud of our firm for spotting the potential. And why I'm talking about pride, we as a community should be proud of our university for offering the Portfolio Partnership Program, which gives so many of our kids here in the west of Melbourne the extra chance at tertiary education. Surely this is what the founding fathers of Footscray Institute would have had in mind when they established it. Well done to you. The second point I would like to make is that during my working life, and in fact my whole life, I have lived by the rules my parents taught me. I was brought up to practice honesty, integrity and fairness in all my dealings. I was very fortunate to meet my partner, Jeff Steer, who operates by the same code of behaviour. Indeed, our firm, Matthew Steer, is dedicated to operating accordingly to only the highest principles of professional and personal conduct. We wouldn't advise a client to do anything we wouldn't do ourselves. Simple, clear, honest. What I have found over the years is if something doesn't look right or smell right, it's usually rotten. You've all heard about the Enrons and HIH debacle and the like. Use your common sense. Trust your instincts and stay true to what you believe. Your reputation is your most valuable asset that you can own. My third and final point is never work a day in your life. There is an old Chinese proverb which says, if you choose a job you love, you will never have to work a day in your life. I am very lucky and I hope you will be too. You may have many jobs and maybe even different careers but unless you love what you do and are passionate about doing it, you will never achieve your potential. All the money in the world will not buy the fulfilment which comes from succeeding in doing what you love. This will make you free. I can honestly say I've never worked just for the money. It's important, but I'm not not just for the money. So in 2038, when maybe you're invited to give the occasional address and you're grey like me, You will have become the books you've read, the people you meet and the places you visit. So as you go out into professional life, think about what is right and the road you want to take. Enjoy what you do, build upon your strengths and be excited about the future. It's yours for the taking. Good luck and thank you.